All right, so I just found this ancient Del Vostro 270S sitting in storage, covered in dust, smelling like 2013 office energy, and probably last used to print someone's resume. Most people would have thrown this thing away years ago, but not me. No, I looked at it and thought, can I actually turn this fossil into a gaming PC? It sounds ridiculous, I know. This thing was built to open Excel, not explode creepers in Minecraft. But hey, if there's even a single drop of life left in it, we're gonna find it. So today, I'm giving this 12-year-old Dell a second chance at glory, upgrading, tweaking, and probably praying a little along the way, to see just how far we can push it in 2025. And to make this upgrade a little more fun, let's bring back some memories. Nobody really knows this, but I actually owned this Dell Vostro back in 2013. My parents bought it for me when I was still in elementary school. It was my study computer, or at least that's what they thought. I used to spend hours playing old school 2D games on it, completely hooked. But every time I tried running an FPS, this poor thing would sound like it was dying, like I was forcing it to drink poison. Eventually, I saved up and bought a new piece and this little Dell went straight into retirement. But now, years later, I need a machine to test out some modern games, and you guys need a good video to watch. But before we start upgrading anything, let's take a look inside and see what this thing is actually working with, and what we can realistically upgrade. So we've got a single 8GB stick of DDR3 RAM, and thankfully, there's still one empty slot next to it for an easy upgrade. Oh, and check this out! A Wi-Fi card? That was actually a pretty cool feature, 12 years ago. And here's the part I've been waiting for, the PCIe slot. Yep, that's the one the heart of any gaming upgrade. The only problem, space. There's barely enough room in here to fit a proper GPU and that's going to make this whole thing interesting. Oh, and the power supply? Only 220 watts. Yeah, that's another headache waiting to happen. For the operating system, I'll use a separate SSD to boot Windows. Because sure, it does have a DVD drive, but if I wait for that thing to start up, my day's basically over. Oh wow, it actually booted up super fast. Straight into Windows, smooth as butter. Like it's been waiting years for its big comeback moment. Inside, this thing's rocking an Intel i3-2130. A dual-core, four-thread CPU from the old Sandy Bridge era. It's locked at 3.3 GHz, and let's be honest, if you're trying to game on this, you might want to stay far, far away. The best thing this chip does is display an image and save you on your power bill. But hey, that's exactly why we're here. I want to see just how far this little guy can go. Can it actually run some of today's games or will it just give up halfway through? Let's find out. Keeping the settings on Minecraft at fast, it actually runs okay. Around 30 FPS, but only at a humble 1280 by 720 resolution. Outside of Minecraft though, this thing can't handle any modern titles. And that's not really a surprise since we're working with Intel HD Graphics 2000, basically a glorified display adapter. At this point, its main job is just to show an image and maybe stream a 1080p YouTube video if you're lucky. So yeah, I think it's time to finally say thank you and goodbye. This little CPU has served me well for years, but now it's time to breathe some new life into the system. I've got something special for the upgrade, an i7-2700K. Back in its day, this was a beast. It's built on the LG A1155 socket launched in 2011 and supports both Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge generations. Performance-wise, it still holds up surprisingly well, roughly on par with something like the modern A310,000F in entry-level builds. We're talking four cores, eight threads, base clock 3.5 gigahertz, turbo up to 3.9, and yes, it can be overclocked. Unfortunately, this motherboard doesn't have the right chipset for that, and the 220-watt PSU definitely isn't helping. So after swapping in the new CPU, I jumped back into Minecraft, and honestly, performance didn't change that much. We're talking maybe a 10 to 15 FPS boost, which is nice, but not exactly game-changing. The CPU clearly isn't maxed out yet, and I'm pretty sure I know why. It's that single RAM stick holding everything back. So I popped in another 8GB stick, running dual channel, and the results actually surprised me. FPS jumped another 10 to 15 frames, now hovering around 50 FPS on average. That's finally playable, at least if you're not too picky about fancy graphics. Still, we've hit a wall. Like, this setup just can't handle modern games without a dedicated GPU. So, yeah, it's time to give this little Del Vostro some real firepower. Let's add a graphics card and see what it can really do. Unfortunately, I don't exactly have the budget for one of those high-end, low-profile GPUs the kind that costs more than the PC itself. 
So for now, I'm sticking with my trusty GT1030 2GB. It's small, it's simple, and honestly, it fits perfectly. Just plug it in and boom, we're good to go. Back to Minecraft. And I could not believe my eyes. With the same settings as before, the FPS shot up to around 800. That's like 30 times higher than what we started with. This tiny car just turned my little office PC into an absolute gaming monster. And the results were actually pretty solid. FPS sometimes hit over 100, though it averaged closer to 50. You can tell it's not super stable, and there were dips here and there, but still, way better than I expected. Finally, I fired up Fortnite, same 1080p low settings, and this time the FPS hovered steadily between 90 and 100 smooth gameplay. No major stutters, totally playable. But here's the thing, all those results were still on low settings, mostly relying on the CPU to do the heavy lifting. If I actually want to see better graphics, that's where things get tricky. This tiny case only fits low-profile GPUs, and that's a huge limitation. So, I came up with a crazy idea. What if I just cut the case open? Yeah, you heard that right. I'm gonna cut off part of the chassis so I can fit a full-size GPU inside. And the one I picked, a GTX 1650 4GB, the single-fan version, which is still compact but way more powerful than the GT 1030 2GB. I grabbed my cutting tool and started working on the case. A few sparks, a bit of metal dust later, and done. Now the new GPU slides in perfectly. While I'm at it, I'm also swapping out the old cooler for a bigger air cooler to help keep the CPU nice and chill. And just like that, my once tiny office PC is starting to look and sound in a, like a real gaming rig. Starting off with CS2, the overall FPS didn't jump by a huge amount, but here's the thing. The average FPS and 1% lows improved a lot. That means the gameplay feels way smoother now, with fewer dips and stutters. Definitely a noticeable upgrade in how consistent it runs. Jumping back into Fortnite with the same settings, it seems like the FPS didn't really change much. Still hovering around 100 FPS. Looks like the CPU's the real bottleneck here, doing most of the heavy lifting while the GPU's just chilling. That said, there's still plenty of headroom. You could totally crank the settings up a bit and still get smooth gameplay. In Minecraft, the FPS got a nice little boost. Now it's sitting around 50 to 100 frames, and sometimes it even spikes past 900 for a split second. But keep in mind, that's only with two render chunks, so we're barely scratching the surface here. Let's push it a bit further and see what this thing can really handle. Next up, Minecraft with shaders at 1080p, and honestly, it's looking really solid. FPS stays around 50 to 60 frames per second, and the map loads insanely fast. The whole session runs stable. No stutters, no lag spikes. Power draw sits at about 120 watts, which isn't bad at all. Still within what the stock PSU can handle, but I wouldn't push it for long sessions though. Old power supplies like this can turn into ticking time bombs if you stress them too much. After all the upgrades, this little Dell Vostro 270S has completely surprised me. From a forgotten office PC that could barely open Minecraft, it's now pulling hundreds of FPS and even handling modern games like CS2 or Fortnite decently. Sure, it's not a powerhouse, but for a 12-year-old machine running on budget parts, this is seriously impressive. It's proof that with a bit of patience, creativity, and maybe a few power tools, you can breathe new life into almost any old PC. If you enjoyed this project, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.